Okay, Elizabeth, thank you. I know there are so many questions on testing. Let me bring in this doctor, Dr. Myron Cohen. He's director of the Institute for Global Health and Infectious Diseases at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So, uh, Dr. Cohen, thank you so much for, for joining me. And, and let's jump back to the, this, this concept of community spread, right? I mean, the, the question on so many minds is how, how could this patient, how, how could you get coronavirus if you don't travel to uh, a nation in which there is coronavirus and, and you presumably don't know anyone who's had it? Um, I think the obvious suggestion is that there is someone in Northern California with coronavirus, whether symptomatic or asymptomatic, uh, that was able to transmit the virus to the what we're going to call this, the index case, the person with new infection in Northern California. So there have to be, there almost certainly have to be two people involved. It is possible, we think a coronavirus primarily is through respiratory spread. A tremendous amount of work has been done looking at the efficiency by which it's spread respiratory. It's possible, I heard one of your commentators earlier talk about uh, contamination of an environmental surface. That's possible, but much less likely than, than a respiratory spread. So with this case, with this patient, and there's still a lot of variables, right, unknown variables, does this mean we're in a new phase? And, and, and because of that, will that force officials to rethink how they test, how they respond? Yeah, I, th I think that this is an emerging pathogen, this COVID-19, the coronavirus. It's, it's a new pathogen. And the most important thing for us to do, and which we are trying to do now, is to learn the rules that govern this. What does that mean? There are rules that govern transmission and the efficiency of transmission and when transmission can and cannot occur. And then there are rules that govern what the infection will do. As many of your commentators have already said, about 80% of the people have mild infection and a smaller number go on to severe infection. So there are reasons why most people have mild infection and some get more severe infection. So we're really trying to learn the rules. And if you look at other emerging pathogens, I, I worked a lot in HIV, it took us 20 years to understand many of the rules that govern HIV. We've had about 20 days to understand um, yeah. uh, COVID-19, and, and it's been terrific, by the way. I think the uh, scientific capacity that's been applied to the problem, there's like an article every hour mm. trying to answer the questions you're asking. In terms of what's happening, we're, we're grateful for that, thank goodness, all these brilliant scientific minds. There was that delay of several days, as Elizabeth was just pointing out, you know, from the time that that patient was admitted to the time that he or she was tested for coronavirus. And, and UC Davis Medical Center, where this patient's being treated, said, uh, quote, since the patient did not fit the existing CDC cr criteria for COVID-19, uh, a test was not immediately administered. Is that concerning mm -hmm. at all to you? Yeah, I, I, again, it's a, this is a dynamic situation. Uh, the, the test that's available, people are trying, uh, the scientists are trying to understand the exact validity of the test as they develop it and improve it as rapidly as possible. This is a test of the virus itself. And um, in order to develop the test and distribute it, as it will happen soon, uh, it takes some time. And I think this will, I, I believe this case in, in uh, Davis, will speed up the process by which this kind of testing is available nationwide. What about hospitals? Because I know the CDC is advising Americans to, to be prepared for significant disruption to their lives. How are our nation's hospitals preparing? What, what are they doing right now? Um, I can speak for the University of North Carolina where I work and, and we're taking, t we have terrific uh, commitment in preparation. Um, for example, um, if uh, every, every person who uh, now checks in for medical care, is asked about their travel history, whether they have a cough, um, and uh, questions of that nature. And our system then is prepared in a particular way to um, respond to an affirmative answer. So I think most hospitals, most medical centers are doing the same thing. But you've raised a really big concern, and that is uh, we, we, we have to avoid being overwhelmed should this should this spread, and no one can predict the exact spread, we need to be prepared to take care of the, the sickest patients uh, effectively. And mm -hmm. so we're trying to prepare for that right now. We, and, and I think the preparations are going well. I'm sure most hospitals and medical centers are doing what we're doing. Okay. Dr. Myron Cohen in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Thank you, sir, very much.